How's going guys, welcome to the channel. In this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto got banished and got harem with Alyssa, a K-man Leon. Part 1. Huge shout out to Black Spirit 101 for this story. If you wants to see awesome fanfiction like this, don't forget to subscribe. Now let's get into the video. A young man could be seen walking along a road leading to the big city also known as the Imperial Capital. Long blonde hair that reached his shoulders and was tamed as well, played in the wind and on his back, a very nice looking sword. His clothes consisted of a black set of pants, black steel toed boots and a white tank top. On his back was a katana his father gave him, and on his wrist was a very nasty looking bracelet. It was a red color with white running in the middle. He could still remember that his mother told him that the bracelet was just one half of a bigger hole. But he didn't know what. His parents were the leaders of their village, but when an assassin came and killed his parents, the elders thought this was the best thing since sliced bread. They stole everything from Naruto and even kicked him out. He was only 10 at the time. He was given the bracelet at the age of 7. His mother also told him that should the bracelet accept him and bond forever to his arm, then he was the true ruler of an even bigger land. Well, it bonded alright and he was kicked out. He should be ruling his own land. Women came to be with him in bed, children born from the women running around while he worked as the leader. Yeah right. He was kicked out of his family home and was completely overruled at every turn. His people should they be found helping him, they'd be executed on the spot. They didn't want that to happen so Hei left him alone. Naruto's own friends too turned their backs on him in fear of being executed. And now here he was. 17 years old and finding his own way to become better and stronger in everything. He sought to gain wealth beyond anything in this world and gain his own land where he could rule over people there. Power to rule over. He'd follow in his father's footsteps on ruling over them with justice and love. He didn't even realize that in his spacing out, he wandered straight into a temple of some sorts. Finding himself in the doorway of the temple, he looked around and found what looked like statues of a man who held a very strange sword. Walking deeper into the temple he looked about and found some strange writing on the walls. It explained some very interesting things that seemed to be of a legend. Looking too on one of the statues he found on his right wrist was a very unusual bracelet that seemed to be the one he too wears. This is getting really weird. Said the boy as he backed away only to hit into something in the center. Looking to what he collided with he found a stone coffin. On the one side it read. The Emperor's Cursed Blade. Curiosity getting the better of him in a serious way, he pushed the stoner slab off and what he found was what he would and wouldn't expect. What he would expect was that skeleton of the man was there. But the weird thing he didn't expect was that the sword was still there. It was a very big buster sword with what looked like a chainsaw as the blade. Vents shot out from the top and the entire thing looked to be a shade of red. Not even a speck of dust on it. There were two guards on it. One on each side. Also a red color. Even down to the handle, it was red all over. Down to the very long handle. That was when his bracelet began to flash a strange red color along with the sword. But that was when the unthinkable happened. Veins from the bracelet shot out into his arm, and strange veins also shot out from the sword. His arm was no longer his. It slowly moved on its own, and soon enough, his hand made contact with the handle. Power surged throughout his body as what sounded like a roar from Kami knew where echoed through the room. He had never felt something like this in his life. It was incredible. When it was done, the chainsaw came to life. Grabbing the weapon, he found it to be extremely light. But also felt very durable. His katana never felt like this at all. Taking the blade he left the temple when a woman with cyan long hair and a black outfit that showed off quite a good amount of her beauty came into the clearing. She had fiery red eyes and she seemed to be carrying a set of flowers. Looking up she soon dropped them and her hands went for her sword at her hip. She glared bloody daggers at the man before her while the man held up his hands in surrender. Wait wait wait. Said the boy repeatedly. Who are you? And how do you know this place? Are you a grave robber? She asked slowly drawing her sword. Look I just stumbled into this temple by accident and I found this thing. Please, I don't mean any disrespect. Said the boy as he laid the sword down. The woman's eyes widened at what she was seeing. On his right wrist was the very bracelet that had been lost. She was told by her father many years ago that should a man come one day bearing he bracelet, it meant he was the second coming of Lenka. But her village had long been wiped from existence, leaving her the only one. She dropped to her knees and bowed to him. This time the young man was confused. First this chick was going to turn him into Swiss cheese. Now she was bound to him. Why? Slowly walking over to her, he tapped her shoulder and she looked up. Forgive me. I never realized the prophecy was true. She said as she dropped her head again. May I ask your name? Asked the man. My name is Silveria. I'm a Valkyria. The last Valkyria. Said a woman. Sweet. I'm Naruto. Naruto Yuzumaki Namikaze. Replied the man. A pleasure. 
said Silveria as Naruto pulled her to her feet. So, what is this prophecy? Asked Naruto. The prophecy stated that a young man will pick up the forbidden Tigu and smite the world of evil. That peace and prosperity will rain down for miles as he rules them with grace and true intent. Replied Silveria. So you think this guy is me? Asked Naruto arching an eyebrow. I do. You hold the God Ark. A weapon made from a god that fell from the heavens. It is one of the only ones in existence. Said Silveria. How many were made? Asked Naruto arching his eyebrow. Only two. That one there is the stronger one. Said Silveria pointing at the god Ark. So who was the guy in there? Asked Naruto pointing at the temple. His name was Lenka. He once ruled these lands and kept peace between the lands. But that was when he died and the new emperor took his place. The people are living in fear. They want change. They dare not speak of such things of people coming in to help them. But a group of people have been giving the empire real hassle. Said Silveria. I see. And who are they? Asked Naruto. They call themselves Night Raid. A group of assassins that seek to change the way things are done here. Said Silveria. Well there may be only one way to get this done. Said Naruto. And that is? Asked Silveria. Kill to be recognized. If the killing of targets they are after are dead before they get there, then we stand a chance on getting acquainted with them. We can help them change this corrupted, fucked up world. Said Naruto. May I come with? It was my job, should the second coming be found, to assist him in any way. Said Silveria. Okay. We can go together. Said Naruto picking up the god arc and walking off with Silveria following him. Walking around with a huge sword that was slightly bigger than you is something you don't see every day. Especially if you're being accompanied by a very hot woman that kept her guard up at every chance someone would come up to you and ask about the sword. This was slightly getting on Naruto's nerves as he would try have a conversation with someone, and then all of a sudden, the super hot Valkyria next to you would slightly draw her sword and send daggers to those before you. It happened three times and now it was jetting annoying. Stopping and putting down the sword next to a river, Naruto took of his shirt and jumped right in. Before he did jump in, Silveria caught a glimpse of the many scars across his back and along the top part of his arms. They looked nasty and extremely painful. She had to stifle a gasp when she saw the marks across his back. The splashing of the water alerted her when Naruto dived in and began to swimming. Sitting under the tree as the god arc rested against the bank, she watched Naruto enjoy himself. But that was when Naruto stopped and looked at her. Come on. The water is amazing. Said Naruto. I couldn't. I need to keep my eye on your weapon said Silveria. What do you mean? It's not that it's going to bite anyone. Said Naruto with a small chuckle. Trust me. I know a lot about the god arc from my father. When a god arc recognizes its new master, it will refuse to work apart for its master. Said Silveria. Really? Asked Naruto swimming over to her. Yes. It has a sort of pack mentality and focuses on only the one who is ah. Shouted Silveria as she soon found herself in the water. Humming up for air she found Naruto laughing at what he just did. But Silveria wasn't done by something like this. So she sprayed water into his face. But what they didn't realize was that while they were having a very happy time in the water, was that a robber was walking past and seeing the nice big shiny red sword just chilling on he bank looked so nice. So he went and grabbed it. It was a bad move he came to regret. The sword roared to life as it began to shift and bend to form a very nasty looking thing. The sword's blade shot into the hilt and something burst out. It was full black and had four yellow eyes. Its teeth were sinister and extremely relatable to that of a demon's. The cries alerted the two of them, and Naruto swam as fast as he could to the crazed sword. Turns out what Silveria said about the sword was true. So it was more than just a sword. It was a living sword. And the thing coming out of the sword was proof of that. Speeding and scrambling to the shore, he jumped in front of his sword just as it was about to strike. Sadly, just as the Aragami struck, Naruto got in front, and the Aragami bit him on his right shoulder. Realizing what the sword did, it retracted from Naruto's shoulder and returned to the sword, returning it to what it used to be. As the regular chainsaw weapon it was. Picking up the sword while Silveria came up to him on his left. Seeing the blood slowly trickle down his body, she gasped but kept it in. Thanks man, you don't know how much I'm in your debt. Said the man. Yeah. I don't know. So tell me why you tried to steal my sword. Asked Naruto coldly. Look I just wanted some money. And I saw that shiny thing and decided to take it. How was I to know that it was a living weapon? Said the robber. Either way you have injured me as you can see, saving your scaly ass. For that, you die now. Said Naruto as he lifted the sword up and sliced the robber in two. But that mess cleaned up, Naruto dropped the god arc as he clutched his shoulder. All the adrenaline had left him and his body was now in pain. Silveria helped him and sat him down on the rock. She dared not touch such a powerful object lest she wanted to be killed. Don't move. 
she said as she placed her hands over the bite marks. Doing as she said, Naruto stood perfectly still. He soon felt her hands against his back and instantly flexed his shoulder muscles. Silveria was having a very hard time calling on her power. Seeing such a man shirtless and ride in front of her was something she hadn't taken into consideration. Taking a deep breath, she called in her power, and her hands glowed a brilliant white. The bite wounds on Naruto soon healed, and he turned around just in time to see her power return to her. He had never seen the power of a Valkyria. Only stories of their power. You probably think I'm some type of monster, many are due to me having danger beast blood. Said Silveria only to be completely shocked when Naruto pulled her into a hug. I don't care who you are. As long as I can depend on you to have my back, I'll be fine. Thank you Silveria. Said Naruto as she began to blush up a storm. You're welcome. She said as she returned the hug. She had never let anyone know her secret. But when she helped someone with her powers. They would call her names. But not Naruto. He truly was grateful to her. The way he thanked her for healing his wounds and having his back. She'd persevere in keeping him safe. After all, she may be protecting the next ruler of the empire. Breaking from the hug, Naruto put his shirt back on and grabbed his god arc. Seeing Silveria red like that just made him chuckle as he held out his hand. Taking the hand offered to her, Silveria went on her way with Naruto and made their way again into the city. It was a little weird as they kept staring at him. Or more like the giant sword on his shoulder. Silveria and Naruto soon found a place that would let them stay for the time being. But that was when a little girl with a few guards came up to them. Excuse me mister. Would you like to come home with us? You look to be so tired. She said with a smile. Silveria Chan and I have already gotten a room. Said Naruto with Silveria smiling with a blush at what he just said. We can provide you with more. Please come along. She begged. Okay fine. Let's go. Said Naruto as he took Silveria's hand and they got into the carriage with her. A good few minutes of a drive and they finally got to a very nice manner. Getting settled in, Naruto took one bedroom while Silveria to the room next to his. They had very much enjoyed the food they were given and then decided to call it a night. But Silveria just felt uncertain about it all. She relayed her feeling to Naruto and Naruto kept the god arc with him. Just in case. But as his eyes began to close, a thunderous crashing of window being smashed echoed through the manor and Naruto shot up at attention. Scrambling out of bed and grabbing and throwing on his tank top, he grabbed his god arc he sped outside and found a mass of people on top of a thread like a spider. The god arc roared to life as the chainsaw spun violently, ready to cut down anything it could reach. Silveria too was alerted and shot out a room with her shirt half buttoned up. Looking to each other, Naruto and Silveria shot out the window and bounded to catch them, but they were getting away too fast. Grabbing the handle he pulled the bottom part till it couldn't be pulled anymore. To his amazement and also the amazement of Silveria, the origami launched itself at the assassins and tore through the rope like it was nothing but twine. All of them dropped to the floor and turned just as the origami returned to be back inside the sword, with the chainsaw blade returning to its usual length. Who are you? And why did you kill those people? Snarled Silveria as she drew her sword and stood ready to attack. We killed them because they had been doing horrendous things. Replied one with raven black hair and red eyes. So this entire thing was just a game to you? Asked Naruto walking to be beside Silveria, the weapon in his hands revving with malice. Stop. Came a voice from the crowd. Everyone turned as a woman walked into the clearing. She had silver hair and electric blue eyes. She clothing was full black, while her ample assets were large large and didn't stop Naruto's eyes from landing on them. Silveria sighed as she slammed her foot on Naruto's. What the fuck was that for? Asked Naruto rubbing his foot. Oh nothing. Just that you were staring. Replied Silveria with a twitch in her eyebrow. Oh? Do I hear some jealousy in your voice? Is that it? Asked Naruto with a cheeky smirk. Ah it's not like that. Said Silveria turning around so damn fast while trying to hold down the blush. Whatever. If ever you need to talk to me. I'm right here. Said Naruto looking back to the woman before him. Who are you? Asked Naruto turning back to her. My name is Nagenda. And we were sent here to kill that family. But now that our escape plan went tits up, I find myself standing before the one who holds the forbidden Tigu. The one of two of its kind to ever exist. Said Nagenda with surprise. How do you know of that weapon? And how do you know it's a Tigu? Asked the one with blonde hair. There were two forbidden Tigus created. And the first one is rired in front of us. The very weapon used by Emperor Lenka himself. Said Nagenda. That's all well and good. But what does this have to do with this guy? Asked a raven-haired girl again. It has everything to do with him. The very weapon he had was named Dread King. The very weapon that fed off flesh of its victims. As well, it can only be wielded by one who holds a very special type of bracelet. But no one has seen that thing in over 160 years ago. Said Nagenda. 
I get it. I'm the one who is this type of freak with a forbidden tigu is that it? Said Naruto venomously. Don't you see it? That very weapon Asa the one Lenka used single-handedly on an overwhelming enemy one man. That weapon has meaning. Said Nagenda. I don't care what you say. I'm not working with any of you. Snarled Naruto. Oh yeah? Then what about this? Asked Nagenda as two of her people opened the shed doors. Slowly walking inside Naruto gasped in shock as Silveria did the same. Cages lined his sides and were suspended from the roof as dead bodies littered the area. But on the wall next to him on the right. Were two heads that he recognized all too well. The heads of his mother and father. Perfectly preserved and hung on a peg. Dropping to his knees as Red King clanged onto the floor, Naruto began to weep. He remembered the day like it was yesterday. The day his parents were murdered and had their heads removed. It was a very grueling sight for someone like him to see. And then something snapped inside his mind. Something vicious. The Red King hummed back to life as if it felt what its master felt. At that moment a voice was heard outside. Oh, they found me out. Oh well. I'll let you join your family in the afterlife. Pity they left without their son don't you think? Came the voice of the little girl that sent the assassin. You little bitch. Snarled Silveria as she drew her sword only to be stopped by Naruto, who slowly got up with Red King roaring in his hands. This one is mine. Said Naruto as he walked to the little girl and now flanked by seven guards. Sending the guards on him, Naruto sliced through them with the chainsaw bristling as blood flew off the spinning blades. The little soon found that she may be facing someone who was more powerful than anything she had ever seen. She didn't even realize that she had opened a can of worms. I'm sorry. Please. Let me live and I'll do everything for you. I'll give you anything. Please. She begged. You stole away my parents. Now I'm gonna steal your life. Said Naruto as he lifted the weapon above his head. In the moonlight before the little girl was killed, she caught a glimpse of his eyes. They were a full demonic red, and his pupils were slits. They looked to have been from the very depths of hell itself. As well veins appeared near his wrist where the bracelet was. The veins pulsed with a yellow-orange glow as Naruto's strength increased to new heights. Silveria saw this shift in him and realized he was tapping in deeper abolites offered by the god Ark. But this was dangerous, even for him. Bringing Red King down in one fell swoop, Naruto ended the little girl, and the chainsaw slowed down and eventually stopped. Nijenda slowly approached Naruto and placed a hand on his shoulder. Looking at her Naruto found assurance in her eyes. I will help you. To avenge my parents. Said Naruto with Nijenda holding her hand out to shake. Welcome to Night Raid. Said Nijenda as Naruto shook hands with her. Finding themselves in a mountain hideout, Naruto and Silveria were quite impressed. They had never seen anything like this. It was pretty cool. The blonde-haired chick came up to them who introduced herself as Leon. But Naruto took the time to bury his parents' heads. Even though he buried the bodies, he just felt it necessary to bury the heads. He didn't like the idea of them being used as trophies. It just felt wrong. Hey guys, what's up? Asked Leon with a smile. How about telling us what the hell is going on? Said Naruto with a scold. He knew why he joined them. It was to stop a corrupt minister from destroying people's lives. And all those things about wiping out a few bad apples here and there. But he just felt weird with them. He knew killing was wrong, but if it meant burying his bands in blood to save the lives of others, then he'd do it. You want to join us? Asked a woman with purple hair. What did I say yesterday? Asked Naruto. Well, that was expected. But do you have what it takes? Asked the woman. What the hell does that supposed to mean? Asked Silveria glaring at her. Ah, Sheila is just playing. After all you wield a forbidden tigu. One that hasn't been seen for 160 years. Said Leon slamming her hand against his back. Well, let's go and meet the others. Said Leon dragging Naruto and Silveria away. Here is where we train and hone in on our abilities. And looks who's training right now. Said Leon as they stopped outside with her pointing at one of their members who was shirtless. This is Bulet. One of our first members to join. Said Leon as Bulet stopped and walked over to them. Ah, you must be the new guys. A pleasure to meet you. Said Bulet holding his hand out to shake. Likewise. Said Naruto shaking his hand. Yeah. And he's gay. Said Leon making Naruto retract his hand very quickly. Now now. Don't give them the wrong idea. Yet. Said Bulet giving Naruto a smile which very much creeped the fuck out of him. Anyway moving on. Said Leon as Naruto as Silveria hurried along with her. After a few minutes of being introduced to the members, they ended it off with meeting a came who was eating away at a bird she just cooked. Even meeting Nijenda who was sitting on the chair behind the fire. So, what do you think so far? Asked Nijenda. It's pretty good. But I must ask. What else do you do apart from assassinations? Asked Naruto. We also do a bit of recon and some espionage. 
We're a splinter cell group type black ops unit where we take out targets of interest. Said Nagenda. I see. So you in a sense fight for what's right. Said Silveria. Yes. But at whatever angle you wish to look at. It's still killing. And one day we must atone for our sins. Said Nagenda as a cane went in for another bite of food. I see. And I'm fine with that. Said Naruto with Silveria agreeing with him. Good. Now, I can tell you're pretty good with Red King, so you'll be going on your first assassination mission. Your target is a man called the Ogre. He is quite powerful and strong. As well, using your Tigu may not work in your favor as people will soon know what is going on. That Tigu holds power and influence. Said Nagenda. Got it. Don't use Red King. Said Naruto. Good. Get some rest. You're gonna need it. Said Nagenda as they walked off. Getting settled in one of the rooms, Naruto looked over to the god arc that was now his Tigu. The very weapon used by the Emperor Lenka. He never thought that the stupid bracelet his parents gave him was tied to that thing. His musing were cut short when there was a knock on the door. The door opened to reveal Silveria. She walked over to Naruto and rested her head against his shoulder, while Naruto wrapped an arm around her, pulling her close. Are you sure you want to do this mission alone? I can provide backup and ensure you're safe. Said Silveria while Naruto chuckled. I'll be fine. Plus I need to sometimes do assassinations on my own, so I'll be fine. Said Naruto while Silveria grabbed his face and looked into his eyes. Naruto saw concern and worry. She, during their short travel together had developed feelings for Naruto, and she couldn't stand the sight of him injured. She watched him as he stopped his god arc from going berserk. Grabbing her and giving her a peck on the lips much to her shock. He brought her into a hug to which she responded to and hugged him back. She soon melted into the hug as she leaned against his shoulder. I will always be okay. I promise. Said Naruto as he got up and left for his mission. Silveria stayed in his room, tracing her lips with her fingers. She thought that he would only see her as a friend, but that kiss he gave her proved otherwise. He cared for her. He genuinely cared for her. She soon found herself blushing as she laid down on his bed and looked over to Red King resting against the wall. The weapon revved itself while Silveria blushed. Oh yeah? What you gonna do about it? She said as she looked to the ceiling. But Naruto. Naruto definitely went by his word and left Red King there in night raid. Walking along the streets while tailing his target, he waited for his moment, tapping the man on the shoulder he watched the man look over his shoulder. Excuse me. Captain Ogre. I must speak with you. Said Naruto his face covered by a black trench coat he bought which came with a hoodie. Okay. Go ahead. Said the Ogre. Not here. We must speak privately. Said Naruto. They made their way into an alleyway, and the Ogre watched as Naruto dropped the floor. Please sir. Let me join the Imperial Guard. Begged Naruto making the man he was meant to kill sweat drop. Just go to the recruitment center and they will do it for you. Said the ogre turning around. I did that. Said Naruto as his hand went to the dagger he also bought. But they refused my request. Said Naruto in a colder tone. Night Raid HQ. Silveria was busy in her room, brushing her hair as she slowly hummed to herself. Her moments with Naruto and then Naruto giving her a peck on the lip still fresh in her mind. But her thoughts were cut short when the sound of an engine revving to life was heard. Thinking it was nothing she continued brushing her hair. But that was when a crash was heard alerting her and whoever was in the hideout. Sprinting to Naruto's room they found Red King missing and a very massive hole in the roof. This only spelt one thing for them. Red King was racing to its master. She should have let them know. That Red King according to the legend was that should its master be in trouble or something along those lines, the weapon will launch itself to reach its master and remain by his or her side. Which meant Naruto was busy fighting an opponent and was probably running out of options. But Naruto. Naruto waited for his moment to strike. Sweat beaded down his face as the ogre stood there motionless with hands on his own weapon. Naruto knew he had to act now. He couldn't hesitate any longer. Well, let's see if you have what it takes. Shouted the ogre as he swung only to feel a knife plunge into his side. He dropped to the floor impressed that Naruto acted without hesitation. Naruto sighed in exhaustion. He knew that emission was done, but now that it was done, he'd have walk all the way home. But his thoughts were stopped then and there as the ogre shot up and slammed his sword down to the ground. Naruto barely dodged the attack. His dagger that was still inside the ogre was pulled out and crushed instantly by him. Flicking his tongue at how he had no weapon, he dodged another attack from him. But both their thoughts were cut short when the roar of an engine echoed through the night. Looking up Naruto's eyes widened when he watched his weapon, Red King shoot from the sky and embedded itself in the ground right in he middle. The ogre's eyes widened at the weapon before him. He heard stories about the legendary forbidden Tigu and what it could do. But he never thought it was true. Yet it was right here in front of him. Revving as Naruto walked over to the weapon. His eyes cold as ice and his breathing seen coming out his mouth. 
Taking hold of the weapon, Naruto lifted it up as the roar of the chainsaw sped up even more. The veins shot up from the bracelet and spread to be along his arm. His eyes shifting to be red once again, along with his pupils turning to slits. The stories were also more true than anything else in the world. The trump card of the Red King. It increased everything about its master. While doing something very nasty in the end. Such power from just one person. But the trump card wasn't even unlocked at all. It still had a long way to go, but was still very strong, even though it was immature. Look, don't hurt me. I'm sorry for what I did. Just let me live. Said the ogre walking backwards from the demon before him. Sorry. Can't do that. See, I'm an assassin. And you're my target. Said Naruto as he charged forth. It happened in the blink of an eye. One minute the ogre blocked the incoming attack, the next his sword was shattered, and the next was that his lower half was severed from his upper half. The chainsaw died down to where the engine was just idling, and Naruto sighed that his weapon came to him like that. Oh well, looks like he'd be doing missions with the damn thing now. Walking off, Naruto didn't realize he was being watched. A man and a woman were walking home after a night out when they spotted everything from the weapon coming into the scene to the maimed man before them. There was no mistaking it. The weapon they were told about was real. They had to let everyone know that the Forbidden Tigu was back and that it sought to change the world. After all, the Forbidden Tigu was the sign of change according to the legends. Word had quickly spread across the capital of the stranger who holds the weapon of Emperor Lenka. And it wasn't long before many began to retaliate in hopes of creating momentum for summoning the one who holds the Forbidden Tigu. Two people were seen walking into the capital. Both were extremely beautiful. One had platinum-colored hair and electric blue eyes. Her clothing was certainly weird as she had a red checkered skirt on with one strap up, while the other was down. She wore a black shirt that showed quite a lot of her smooth well-toned belly and gave little to the imagination about her assists. Resting on her head was a very large hat that was also checkered. The one next to her looked older and more mature. She had long flowing black hair and her eyes were a dull jealous green and her clothing consisted of a white jacket under a purple button-up. White pants and high heels. Both had the entire people look at them with lust, but they were stopped as the two girls shot them looks of killer intent. The one with platinum blonde hair had two cases with her. One ridiculously big one on her back while a smaller one was in her arms. The one in white had just one bag on her back. Do you think we'll find him in here? The devil's hand I mean. Asked the one with platinum hair. We will Alyssa Chan. We just need to follow the Tigu in the bag. Said the black haired one with her. I guess you're right Tsubaki Chan. We just need to follow the scent said the platinum known as Alyssa as they went to rent a room at an inn. With Naruto. Naruto could be seen training in the backyard of the HQ of Night Raid. Ever since the fight with the ogre, he seriously had to learn the power of Red King. He was still amazed that the weapon was able to track him down from such a distance. And after realizing that the weapon held so much power, he just had to learn it. Sitting on the steps with Silveria, she enjoyed the sight of her crush swinging the god arc around. She was also enjoying the sight of him shirtless. It was incredible that after 160 years the next person would be him. Revving the motor on Red King, he swung behind him and managed to launch a wave of energy. Purple and red energy shot off the weapon and sped to destroy a tree in the corner, along with a large chunk of wall. Silveria clapped her hands as she got up to give him his towel. She too had been training, but she really wanted to train with Naruto. But seeing that he was still inexperienced with his weapon, she had to wait. But that was coming to an end as Naruto was getting better and better. Well done. You're learning more and more. Said Silveria holding out his towel. Thanks. I can very much feel the power now. I think I have it down. Said Naruto as he wiped his face and grabbed his god arc. Pulling just slightly on the handle, he watched as it shifted to become a cannon. The barrel was that of a red minigun, and the chainsaw blade was neatly tucked in underneath the weapon. A tigger appeared at the bottom of the handle as well. The two had mastered this form of the weapon and had even became a pretty good sniper. So much in fact that on occasions, Nijenda gave Naruto missions that required him to do a bit of sniping. He walked away from each one with a perfect headshot. Mine didn't like this fact one bit, but she gave Naruto credit where it was due. Naruto still felt strange every time he lost it when he held the god arc, but he felt it was something the weapon was doing. Even though he didn't know what it was doing to him. Leaning into Silveria he gave her a kiss to which she gladly responded to by throwing her arms around him and pressing her body against his. It lasted a few minutes, and they broke from with Silveria smiling while she ran her fingers through his hair. I love you. She said with Naruto smirking to her. I love you too. Said Naruto as he went to grab his shirt. He would have continued his training on using Red King better if Leon hadn't come into the picture. Hey, you've got a mission. Said Leon. Okay. I'm going. Said Naruto walking into the castle. As he walked into the castle, Leon moved over to Silveria who was still blushing at him as he walked. 
Tapping the girl on the shoulders, Silveria looked over to her. Leon quirked an eyebrow up and smiled at her while she did the same. Can I ask you something? Asked Leon. Sure, what's on your mind? Asked Silveria. Walking into the main hall, Naruto felt a shiver run up his spine as he looked behind him. I swear someone is talking about me. He said as he stopped in front of Nagenda who sat on her chair. We've got a mission to do and this will be a joint operation. You will go with Leon to assassinate a very slippery bastard. He runs a brothel and takes women as sex slaves. He needs to be put down before anyone else gets hurt. The client is a man who lost his sister thanks to him. She was taken from him and now is forced to work as a sex slave there. Said Nagenda. Got it. What time do I leave? Asked Naruto determined on ending this man. You leave a son down. Don't disappoint. Said Nagenda. Have I ever? Asked Naruto making her smirk. I like your attitude. Get it done. Devil's hand. Said Nagenda. Got it. Said Naruto as he walked off. That kid sure is somming. Said Nagenda as Shield came into the room. But he is. He's pretty cute as well. I see the way you look at him. Said Shield when Nagenda blushing. Oh. And what about you? You also like him. Shot back Nagenda. I guess. But what would he say should we both go after him? Asked Shield with the two of them sighing in frustration. Sundown. Four hours later. With everything ready to go, Naruto grabbed Red King and walked out the door just as Silveria was about to come in. Looking to him she found to really like his new look with the trench coat. It really suited him. Placing her hand on his chest, she smiled to him while Naruto too smiled to her. Good luck. She said as she leaned up to him. Thanks. Replied Naruto as he gave her a kiss and headed out to meet Leon. After some talking with Leon, Silveria realized that Naruto was in a sense a very influential man, he could very much sway people and fill him with hope by just swinging Red King around. But it was extremely hard to get hope across without having them murdered for what they believe in. And then came the topic of Leon and Naruto. Silveria was very quick to stand her ground that she loved Naruto with everything she had. But Leon countered that by stating that Naruto had stolen her heart as well. She loved him and really wished to be there for him. For the first time in Silveria's life. She really saw the heart of a woman come out. Leon explained that Naruto had stolen everything about her. His resolve, his entire being surged with strength and power. And now that everyone knew about the forbidden Tigu once again being sighted, people had begun searching for ways to aid them in fights. Naruto had very much grown into an icon of hope, despite his nickname being the Devil's Hand. Silveria agreed at what Leon wanted, being with Naruto of course, and Leon thanked her for it. Now she could be with him. She was truly grateful that Silveria was willing to share him. And now that they were working together on this mission to kill the man who had been stealing women. It was the perfect setting. But it was a little hard and filtering with a huge god arc being carried around. But they managed to get Eno the roof. Naruto had to give credit to the gigantic Tigu that it could read the battlefield. Like what it was doing right now. It was keeping very quiet to ensure they could slip through undetected. But as they moved through the rafters, Naruto was stopped by Leon who pushed him to the ground. A N man that sounded really weird when they're in a roof. Wh what are you doing? Asked Naruto slyly worried Wa has gotten into Leon. He was given his answer when Leon gave him a kiss on the lips. Naruto's eyes widened at what just happened but melted into the kiss when Leon's tongue shot into his mouth. Naruto responded by grabbing her slender shoulders and kissed her back. A for a minute, she separated from the kiss while Naruto had a dazed expression on his face. I want to be with you. Forever. Said Leon with Naruto placing a hand on her cheek. If that is what you want. I'll gladly give you what you want. Said Naruto making Leon hug him while she pressed her assets in his face. Thank you. She whispered. Heading back with the mission, Naruto opened one of the slats and saw many women with what smelt like some aphrodisiac in the air. No doubt this was to keep them docile and easy targets for men. This was truly sick. Naruto reached for Red King on his back but looked to Leon who too nodded her head as she shifted into her Tigu form. Seeing their target move into the room, Naruto opened the ceiling wide enough and jumped down very stealthy-like. Leon watched on from the roof to provide a watch over them. The man reached out to one of the girls only to feel something on his shoulder. As he turned his head, his eyes widened when her felt something rip his stomach open from the back of him. Looking down he saw a chainsaw that was red in color. Instantly he knew who it was. Behind him was the devil's hand. He thought his top-notch security could save him. Oh how wrong he was. He was just skewered through the chest as a result as well. Pulling the weapon out, Naruto watched as the god arc sucked all the blood that was won the weapon into it. The chainsaw buzzed a few times before it became silent. Naruto smiled as he put the weapon back on his back and jumped through the roof. The insured his face was covered so they couldn't recognize him at all, so as long as the people were still believing that the devil's hand really was a demon, then things would be okay. 
but they only knew the weapon. Naruto and Leon jumped out the hole they made in the roof and made their way back to Night Raid HQ. They were a good feet away from the city when Narut's god arc went crazy. It roared to life as it buzzed and writhed on Naruto's back. And Naruto knew what the weapon was trying to tell him. Pulling the god arc off his back and spinning on the balls of his feet, he blocked an attack from a woman with platinum blonde hair. But both Naruto and Leon's eyes widened when they saw the weapon they were attacked with. It was the second god arc. The woman jumped back and Naruto spotted on her right wrist as well. The same type of bracelet he wore as well. But the lady wasn't alone as another woman came with her. Pulling the blade up and onto his shoulder he death glared them. While the one with the second god arc placed hers on the ground. It was more different than Naruto's as the blade was more slimmer, while his was more violent and destructive. The weapon of destruction. The blade of demons. The weapon that was said to have slayed a god in its prime. The Red King. Said the woman. Who are you? Demanded Leon. Oh. I'm sorry. I'm forgetting my manners. Name's Alyssa and this is Tsubaki. We would like to join you. Replied the woman as she lowered her weapon. Both Naruto and Leon looked to each other and thought the exact same thing. Turning back to the two women before them, they opened their mouths with one thing coming out. Why I it? They said with Alyssa laughing while scratching the back of her head. Both Leon and Naruto stared at the two before them as Alyssa scratched the back of her head while a small chuckle came from her lips. Tsubaki simply placed two fingers on her forehead as she shook her head. Sometimes Alyssa could charge in for no reason at all. She was hard-headed that way and she even got into trouble that way. So let me get this straight. Said Leon trying to figure it all out. You came into the capital to meet up with us. Then you attack us for no real reason and then you laugh like nothing happened while holding a straight face that you want to join. That's pre-time much it. Replied Alyssa. Sorry for Alyssa Chan here. She can get carried away sometimes. We wish to join your little crusade. And if you look at it. You'll be gaining two of two forbidden Tigu here. The Red King and the Red Queen. Said Tsubaki. What's name is that god arc again? Asked Naruto hoping he heard right. The name is Red Queen. Responded Alyssa looking to Naruto as she slammed the god arc sword into the ground. Wait let me get this straight. Naruto's god arc is called Red King. And yours is called Red Queen. Naruto's weapon came from Linka. The emperor who last used the god arc. So don't tell me your god arc is from trailed Leon as Alyssa nodded her head. Yes. That's right. The proper name for these two forbidden Tigu is royal couple. Both god arcs were wielded by Lenka and his wife Sakuya Tachibana. It was said that when the two weapons are close to one another, then something amazing happens. But history has left that part out. Tsubaki with Alyssa nodding her head. Did they have a child? Asked Naruto wondering these things. They did. But the child was lost when someone stole said child. They say they had a daughter. Said Alyssa. Great. A child that lived 160 odd years ago. This is getting more cliche by the minute. Said Naruto scratching his head as he leaned on Red King. I guess you could say that. But rumor has it that the daughter was found at the age of 19 and had a family of her own. Added Alyssa. Okay okay. We're getting off track here. Why do you wish to join us? Asked Naruto coming back to reality. The things the Empire have done. It is unforgivable. Ever since word had gotten out about the forbidden Tigu being sighted once more. Troops have been seen coming in and killing people. We got out when the Empire raided one of our homes. Said Tsubaki with Alyssa nodding her head. And then we heard a rumor that a man wielding a Tigu they had never seen before. And them calling him the Devil's Hand, we had to find him. I mean you. We just knew that if we found you, we'd join together and defeat this corruption and bring peace. Said Alyssa. You want to join Night Raid? Asked Leon. Please, we can give you tactical support and even give you the strength on other missions. As well, we did say you'd gain both Forbidden Tigus in the process. Reiterated Tsubaki. It was too good a deal to pass up. With two forbidden Tigu in their ranks, their strength would be bolstered incredibly. As well, they'd be able to give people hope. Naruto was already well known among the people being known as the Devil's Hand. So if word somehow got out about a second unknown Tigu, then they'd be able to give the people more hope. It was perfect. Looking back to the two women before them Leon and Naruto smiled to them while they held out their hands for them to shake. We'd be glad to have you. Just gotta tell the boss about you. Said Leon with Naruto nodding his head. The two of them shook hands with their future comrades and two smiled at them. Alyssa grabbed her god arc as well as he stuff and so did Tsubaki. Turning around they all sprinted to the night raid hideout. A few minutes later. Why it? Shouted Nagenda looking to Alyssa and the Tsubaki. Leon and Naruto had given them a rundown of what happened on their mission and then told them about these two wanting to join night raid. The two even went into detail about how they attacked Naruto, well Alyssa did and then asked to join them. 
Nijenda clearly stared at the two of them, while Alyssa smiled and waved while Tsubaki just smiled. You want to join Night Raid. You do realize that tea stuff we do will get you killed. Said Nijenda leaning forward. We are prepared to answer for what we've done. Said Tsubaki. I like that. Plus, I don't have the resources to turn down a second forbidden Tigu. Especially the sister god Ark to Red King. Said Nijenda. So does this mean we're in? Asked Alyssa all excited. Yes. It means you're in. But I must ask. Are you any good with that god arc? Asked Nijenda with Tsubaki giving a slight giggle. I taught her how to use a sword. She knows a thing or two. She has even acquired her second trump card. Said Tsubaki making them step back at what they just heard. Normal Tigus hold one trump card. But I guess I'm not sort of surprised seeing that you do have a forbidden Tigu. Said Nijenda. Cool. So you'll be trained by mine. She'll also show you around. Naruto, you'll be training with Sheil. Meet her here in the morning. Said Nijenda with them nodding as they left. Sitting on his bed as he began to clean Red King, Naruto felt that the god Ark held more power than what he could ever hope to imagine. And seeing that people had begun to retaliate, things in the Empire had been getting out of control. He was also thinking about what Alyssa mentioned. Could that daughter have been Nah, it wasn't. He was just a child, born to a family who had owned a piece of land people lived on. Why not? Shifting the weapon to its gun form, Naruto continued to clean. He remembered when his mother gave him the bracelet. It was on his seventh birthday. She said that it was a family heirloom, and he should cherish it. And now that he knew that the heirloom was part of the god Ark, then that would mean. Stifling a shout, he clamped his mouth shut. He couldn't let anyone know about this. This news was huge. It would very much grant him he gift of being the most powerfulest man in existence. Why rule over one place when you can have all of it? But that was when his door opened to reveal Silveria. She seemed to be wanting to mention something to Naruto, but when she was about to say it, she found him holding his mouth. Arching an eyebrow she sat down beside him. What's wrong Naru-kun? She asked. I just realized something. Said Naruto making Silveria wonder what he was going on about. Bringing her ear close to his mouth, he whispered his findings to her. By the end of it, Silveria was on the floor with her head low to the ground. Naruto hung his head at what she was doing. Forgive me your majesty. I shouldn't be in your presence. And I apologize for what I said before. Said Silveria as Naruto grabbed her shoulders and sitting her on the bed. Listen to me very very carefully Silveria-chan. No one else knows about this. So far only you know. Said Naruto. But you have a clear shot here. Why not go for it? Asked Silveria raising an eyebrow. I'm not yet strong enough. My power is still not enough. It's not like I can walk up there and shout. Hey, I'm Emperor Lenka's great great Gansan. Let me sit on the throne now. They'd kill me on the spot. Said Naruto with Silveria nodding at where he was going with this. He very much had a point. He'd be butchered should he walk into the palace and pronounce himself the great great grandson of Lenka. But on the other hand, he'd be passing up a golden ticket on setting the people free. But the former didn't sound good. So Naruto had to settle on getting stronger before he could even think about doing anything. Tomorrow, he'd be training with Sheil, and he was planning on doing his absolute best to grow further in his power. But just what did Sheil have planned for him? Oh well, she would be going on her mission tomorrow with a came to kill some Dumbus dictators. Silveria really enjoyed her time in Night Raid. She joined only to keep Naruto safe, but now that he was doing well, she didn't have to worry about his safety. And now she had made her home here. Waking up the next morning, Naruto got dressed and sent his good luck to Silveria. With her happily going on her way, Naruto walked in to find both Sheil and Alyssa there. Sheil was one thing, but Alyssa was the one thing he didn't understand. Why is she here? Asked Naruto trying to sound like he wasn't being an asshole. I asked the boss if she could come with. She agreed to it. Mine will be doing some other stuff on her own. Plus, she chew poor Alyssa alive. Said Sheil pushing her glasses up. Okay. Well, what are we going to do? Asked Naruto. We'll be taking on some cleanup jobs. Despite us wanting to take the Prime Minister out now, we still have to ensure a clean olive branch if you catch my drift. Said Sheil. Ah. So ensure no corruption seeps up anywhere else. Said Naruto. Yes, your god arcs will be required in this one. Meet you at the entrance in 30 minutes. Said Sheil. Walking into his room, he grabbed his god arc, but when his hands came into contact with the handle. Veins appeared on his arm. Grabbing his arm as the veins shot further up his arm, he found his hand was fully latched onto the handle. He couldn't even release it at all. Youth after a full minute, it stopped. Everything looked to be normal, but small black lines where his veins were, still remained. Could the god arc be refusing him? Why was it acting like this? But as he walked to the entrance, he came to realize that in his position, many women would want to bet him when his status as Lenka's great-great-grandson got out. 
He had to ensure that Silveria kept his secret hidden. And he'd be sure that she was well looked after. He'd give her everything she ever wanted and more. He didn't want to see that pretty face of hers cry ever. And he made a vow to make that never happen. Making it outside they went on their merry way. Alyssa had also given Naruto a bag to conceal his god arc, along with her one also in its own bag. This would help them when it came to going into the city to do missions. As people knew only of the god arc not the face who wields the god arc, as long as he was not known, he was okay. Sheila wore a long black coat that kept her face on body hidden while she walked alongside the two. Stopping by a hotel, they mod their way through. Alyssa and Naruto soon realized that they had made their way into a brothel and were here to murder yet another one of those idiots doing human trafficking. He had already killed one, but he wanted to see Alyssa in action with this one. He was utterly impressed when Alyssa murdered every single gourd in the area, as well as the target in question with just one cut. Their blood soon was sucked up by the Red Queen, with the blade flashing a bit in the end. Alyssa turned and smiled to Naruto who also did the same. What was that? Questioned Naruto as they moved on. Well Red King focuses on brutal murders and maiming its victims. Red Queen focuses on swift attacks and silent takedowns. But there is one problem with Red King. Only problem is trailed Alyssa scratching the back of her head. What is wrong with it? Asked Naruto grabbing her shoulders. I sorta of forgot. Replied Alyssa making Naruto sweat drop. You gotta be kidding me. Said Naruto as he let her go and sighed. At about 3 in the afternoon, Naruto, Alyssa and Sheil were done and made their way back home. They found Akeem and Silveria there and even Nagenda. But Nagenda had a bit of a strange look on her face. Deciding to get to the bottom of why she had a sad look on her face, Naruto asked her. Ever heard of General Esdith? Asked Nagenda making Alyssa drop her god arc, causing mine to get a very big fright. Looking to Alyssa, they saw her shaking in pain and hatred. Nagenda too caught this and leaned on her chair. Clasping her hands together, she spoke. I take it you know her? Asked Nagenda as Tsubaki brought Alyssa into her arms. Esdith was the one who gave the order to kill our village. Alyssa was forced to watch her own parents be put down in front of her. I took her in and brought her to the my one before my village was hit. Said Tsubaki as she rubbed Alyssa's back as tears fell from her face. Well, she's coming here to the capital. Apparently she wants to see if she can take down the devil's hand. Which means she trailed looking to Naruto. Yeah. I'm a target. And if she were to find out I'm the devil's hand I am dead. Said Naruto with an agenda nodding her head. Right, Naruto you'll be training under Bulid. Everyone, keep an eye out for anyone who seeks to try and get access to our home here. Said Nagenda. Got it. Said everyone as they retired to their rooms. Laying on his bed as he looked at the black veins along his arm, he still wondered why Red King attacked him like that. Was the weapon beginning to do something to him? Was he losing his touch? No, he could use it fine, but now it was doing some weird stuff. Why? His thoughts were stopped when the door opened to reveal Silveria. She smiled to him as she walked over and plopped onto the bed and laid down with him while she ran her hands along his left arm. She hadn't seen the black veins on his arm yet and he was hoping she wouldn't ever. Turning to look him in the eyes, she gave him a kiss while she snuggled into his form. Is it okay if I sleep here with you? Asked Silveria with Naruto chuckling. Of course you can. Said Naruto as he brought her close to where her head was on his chest. Sighing as she slowly closed her eyes, she began to sleep as her breathing was shallow and Naruto found that cute about her. Slowly closing his eyes, he couldn't help but feel that Alyssa was hurting at the mention of Esdith. He was planning on helping her there and ensuring she was okay. He owed it to her that much as she did everything she could to track him down. Even he owed it to Tsubaki who helped her there as well. But ever since they arrived, Tsubaki had been acting seriously weird around him. He was hoping he was imagining things and that she wasn't crushing on him, but if his suspicions were right, then things may turn ugly when things become competition with the girls. Waking up the next morning to not find Naruto with her, Silveria slowly sat up and found Red King resting against the wall. No matter how many times she looked at the weapon, she really found it to be extremely intriguing. The detail. The craftsmanship and even the way it looked. Just by laying eyes on the weapon, you could clearly tell the weapon was greatly balanced. Even the detail being the little engravings on each tooth of the chain on the blade was very well done. Walking back to her room but finding no one walking by of course, she sat at her dresser. Going through her usual routine of jetting ready for the day, she couldn't help but remember what happened yesterday. Finding out the man you were crushing on was part of Lenka's bloodline. That was big. And she swore to never let anyone know about this knowledge. But she couldn't help but blush. She solitarily in love with a man who was of royalty. Well she was a commoner and a Valkyria at that. Her kind were looked down on society and yet Naruto loved her like no other. Your typical Romeo and Juliet story. With everything she had done in order, she left the room and made her way to find Naruto training outside with Bulid. 
Yulid and Naruto were doing push-ups, and both were working up in sweat. Leon was on Naruto's back, and Akain was on Yulid's back. She wouldn't admit it. But Naruto's overall power was completely out of this world. But that was when she spotted a bandage over his left arm. Curiosity got the better of her, and she decided to jump into the action. Climbing onto Naruto's back with Leon, Naruto pushed even harder with the new weight added to the mix. What's with the bandage? Asked Silveria. It's nothing. Plus, I need something on my one arm to help me. I suffered a slight injury when I was younger. Lied Naruto as he continued his push-ups. How many has he done? Asked Silveria to Leon. This is his 500th one. He and Bulid had a wager that should one of them break, then the loser would take on the next mission solo. Regardless on how hard the mission is. Replied Leon. Seems a bit extreme, but a wager is a wager. Replied Silveria as the two continued to watch the two men go through the motion of doing push-ups. But soon their little training session was cut short when Nagenda came into the picture. Looking over to Naruto she found him to be really good, looking along with the way he was training with no shirt was even better. And the girls on his back just made the cherry on the cake. She wasn't going to lie. Naruto was seriously the man she was into. A man who knew how to look after his body. Plus his name meant Maelstrom. How lucky can you get right? Alright, stop there for the time being. Naruto, you and Bulet are going to venture to go and take out as these three beasts. Dadara, Liver and Nio. The revolutionary army seems to not like the fact that these three people are coming in and looking about. We need you two to go and deal with them now. This is top priority. Said Nagenda. Got it. Said the two of them as the girls got off their backs, and Naruto walked into his room to get ready for the trip. That was when his door was slammed shut, scaring him so much, his instincts kicked up, and his hands reached for the god arc. His hands made contact with the weapon, and the motor revved to life. Spinning on his feet he swung but stopped when he saw it was Silveria. Putting the weapon down, he sighted how close that was. But Silveria moved very quickly. Grabbing the bandage on his arm, she pulled into her shock, she saw the black veins running up his arm. Naruto scolded to her while Silveria ran her hands along his arm. She should have known this would happen. Red King would not let its master go that easily. Until it got something. It's happening. Said Silveria letting go of Naruto's arm. What is? Asked Naruto confused. To be honest, sometimes Silveria never made any sense with anything. Red King is feeding off you. Replied Silveria as Naruto's eyes widened. How can it feed of me? Asked Naruto puzzled by this information. Red King feeds off the blood of others to ensure it will stay sane. How long ago was it when Red King was last fed? Asked Silveria extremely serious about this. About three days ago. Replied Naruto. Yup, it's beginning to feed off you. Should this continue, you will probably never live to see your 30th birthday said Silveria. Is there an alternative? Asked Naruto extremely worried now with Silveria chuckling while she embraced her love interest. There is. Feed the weapon. Let it drink the blood of your victims. But as you unlock more and more of the hidden power, you will be able to control the bloodlust the god arc holds. Don't be discouraged. I know you can do it. Said Silveria as Naruto gave her a kiss to the lips to which she responded to by throwing her arms around his neck and inserting her tongue into his mouth. After a full minute, they broke the kiss, and Naruto walked out while he bandaged up his arm again and made his way outside with Red King in the bag to meet Bulet. Setting out on their adventure, they board a ship. Hoping to intercept the three bastards that were trying to push the army back. While Bulet was setting up his own room, Naruto got settled in his own. But that was when Red King revved a bit as if trying to get his attention. Looking to the weapon in the bag, he ends up to ten found the motor running. Grabbing the handle, Naruto watched as the veins of Orin shoot up his arm again, and this time moved to his eyes. That was when his eyes shifted to be full red with a single slit in them. But he felt different. He didn't feel the sting of the veins when it crept up his skin. Instead he felt a very strong sense of awareness around him. Like his mind was attuned to every small thing around him. He could hear the swimming of the fish under the boat, even the chirping of the seagulls in the sky, which they never saw any of. But the one noise that caught his senses was the slight sounds of stealthy feet followed by the slight pulsing of heartbeats that sounded the call of death. This was not looking good. Bolting out the room with Red King in his hands, he made it to the deck, just as an explosion echoed through the ship, and three people stepped forward. Bula too came into the scene holding his weapon. His eyes widened when he saw his old comrade before him. Liver. What's the meaning of this? Snapped Bula. I am just here to carry out General Esdith's wishes. To kill everything related to troublemakers. Including night raids scum like you replied Liver as he got ready along with the others. But that was when the child of the group looked over to Naruto, and his eyes widened when he spotted the god arc in his hands. The weapon never seen again after Emperor Lenka was laid to rest. Rumors of a man who moves like a demon. 
clad in mystery and shadow who kills innocent officials in the army. A man who was rumored to have sold his soul to the devil for power. The devil's hand. This is pure luck. We get to take out the infamous devil's hand who works for Night Raid. Perfect. Said the kid as he pulled out a flute. Naruto simply growled as the chainsaw roared to life. The veins on his skin now glowing an evil orange as Naruto felt power flow into his body. Switching the god arc to gunner mode, he took aim to the kid. I'd like to see you try. Snarled Naruto as he got the barrels to spin. But as he was about to fire the first bullet, a man who looked chubby jumped in the way and swung his weapon. Naruto barely had time to dodge and took the full hit. Stammering back as he looked the man dead in the eyes, he snarled as he watched him soon bulk up. You've got to be fucking with me. Said Naruto as he shifted the Wii and back to sword mode. I'm your opponent. This will give me serious experience. Said Dadara as he charged to Naruto. Jumping high into the air, Naruto revved Red King to its maximum spin cycle and dropped down hard, hoping to damage something. But he merely grazed the guy. Cursing his luck as he was smashed into the side of the ship, he groaned as he slowly got up. But as he did, he felt the veins along his arm pulse. Dropping to his knees, he clutched his arm as he felt his vision fade. What's happening? Why is Red King doing this? He thought as he watched the man approach him. Don't fear it. Let it happen. Echoed a voice in his mind that wasn't his. Doing as the voice instructed, Naruto let what was happening take place. His eyes turned to be red with slits, and his mind became hazy with bloodlust. His nails turned to claws as his hair turned wild with his ears becoming pointed at the end. Red King responded in kind and burst into blue flames as the teeth on the chainsaw became sensitor looking. Dara stopped what he was doing as he stood there as Naruto took on a more evil appearance. A mask materialized on his face, but it was only half a mask. Three red lines were seen at the top as his sclera turned to midnight black. Looking up to Dadara, Naruto sprinted at him, but his speed was more quicker for Dadara to even see. He's fast. Said Dadara as he searched all over for Naruto. Only to be hit in the side by Naruto when he reappeared. Dadara flew into the equator's top of stairs. Bullet and Liver turned to where Dadara landed and then to Naruto to see the changed boy. He was smiling sadistically, Bullet also took notice of the sharpened teeth that were in his mouth. He was never expecting Naruto to take on such a transformation, but again, he wasn't surprised, considering Red King was a forbidden Tigu. Adara slowly got up, half his face bleeding as he looked to Naruto. Damn that brat. But I'll give him props. He sure knows how to land a hit. Mumbled Adara as he watched Naruto drop down low as the flames around Red King glow brighter. He's coming. He said as Naruto shot off like a bullet and slammed his weapon with Dadara. Dadara could feel it. The sheer strength Naruto held with Red King. But as the match carried on, Dadara noticed that the veins on Naruto's arm which now were along his eyes and on his other arm to the elbow. They were slowly fading away. Meaning Naruto was reaching his limits. The mask on Naruto's face slowly began to crack as the black ink in his sclera slowly began to fade away. Seeing this, Dadara smiled and began to push back against Naruto, finally getting a foothold in the fight. Naruto cursed at this and began to push back, but with him approaching his limits, he felt the blood haze leave his mind. The flames were the next to lose its intensity, as the god arc's chainsaw began to slow down in speed. Jumping back, Naruto decided to unleash the ability he did when he was training and Silveria watching. Placing the god arc on his shoulder, he charged up the remaining power and watched the flames completely die out to be replaced with purple energy seeping off the weapon. Swinging the weapon down he watched as the same wave of power launch at Dadara, but it morphed and took on the form of a dragon. Right then and there, Naruto knew what to call the attack. Dragon wave. He shouted as the attack hit Dadara square on. Dadara tried to block the attack but failed too in the end, as he forgot one key concept in the making. Energy cannot be stopped by ordinary blocks. The wave tore through his body, but there was no damage at all. Only that Dadara's soul was ripped from his body. Dadara's body dropped to the ground with a thud, and his eyes rolled into the back of his head as he died. But the attacker now dead, Naruto dropped to the floor as he breathed sharply. What Red King or the voice did to him left him extremely exhausted. He had nothing left in the tank. He had never felt so drained in his life, and he felt his body extremely heavy. But what was that ability he did? What did he become? Looking over to Bulet, Naruto saw that Bulet had finally won against his fight, but at that moment, before Liver died, he sent a spear made of blood into Bulet's chest, creating a hole in the organ. Sprinting to Bulet, as fast as he could, he dropped Red King near him as he picked up Bulet in his arms. There was a lot of blood and no way on stopping it in time. Bulet grabbed the sword and handed it to Naruto. Take Curcio. And fight on. Said Bulet as Naruto shook his head. You're gonna pull through. Just hold on. Said Naruto as Bulet coughed up blood. I'm already a dead man. Take the Tigu and carry on fighting. Said Bulet pushing Incursio into Naruto's other hand. 
Slowly grabbing Incursio, Naruto nodded his head as Bullet's life left him. Oh how sad. And here I was planning on having Smee fun with him. Now I guess I'll have some fun with you. Said Nayao as he got his Tiga ready. The wicked must be punished for their crimes. They must be destroyed for their actions against the peace we strive for. Said Naruto darkly as he grabbed Red King as well in the other hand, with the chainsaw slowly starting up. And how do you plan to fight me? You have no energy left to attack. Said Nayao scoffing at the idea that Naruto could win. I'll fight till the bitter end. No matter what happens to me. Should I lose myself to save my friends then so be it. Incursio. Cried Naruto as a powerful force of energy shot out from Naruto, as Red King began rev to full power, resonating with Incursio. From the ring which appeared under Naruto's feet, emerged a spirit that slept within Incursio. The dragon clouded over Naruto as the beast began to mold and shift to fit Naruto. Armor attached itself to Naruto's skin as he took on a more powerful form of Incursio. But Red King wanted other plans. Joining with the molding, Incursio found itself mutating due to Red King's influence. The armor shifted to become more demonic. When it was done, Naruto stood there with the mask off. The design was very much considered evil. A N Dedrick armor with no helmet on the player from Skyrim with a cloak over it to get the idea. Naya stepped back in fear as the two weapons joined together to become one sinister weapon. Red King and Incursio were nowhere to be found, and in their place was a very evil-looking sword that had chainsaw teeth that swirled around the weapon's blade. A N Dedrick greatsword being held one-handed with Lindo's god arc's chainsaw teeth moving around the handle to get the idea. What are you? How are you so powerful? Asked Nayao as he stepped back in horror when Naruto opened his eyes to show one of them in a plus sign, while the other was red and slitted with a black sclera. Death awaits you. And I'll be your executioner. Said Naruto as he sprinted full force to Nayao. Nayao tried turning Naruto against him with his Tigu, but the new upgrade thanks to the two Tigus Naruto didn't even hear anything. Swinging the weapon, he managed to cut the Tigu in half. Naruto found this to be increasingly easy with the help of one Tigu and a forbidden Tigu. Sending Nayao into the wall with a massive thud herd, Naruto grabbed a piece of wood and got into the stance a javelin thrower would get into when getting ready to throw. Rearing back and taking a few steps, he threw the piece of wood and watched as the wood pierced Nayao's heart, pinning him to the wall on impact. Nayao died instantly. Returning to normal as the two Tigus returned to be separate, Naruto made his way to Bulet and sent a prayer for the soul of Bulet. Night Raid HQ. Afternoon. Naruto placed the Tigus he had taken from the three beasts and went into detail on what happened in the ship. He left out the parts of him gaining a powerful form from Red King and the part where he had gained an even stronger form from the two Tigus combining. He also told them about him being the new user of Incursio. Nagenda nodded her head while everyone grieved over the lose of Bulet. What you did proved to be incredibly hard. But we're glad you're okay. I can't say the same of Bulet though. But he knew the risk when he joined Night Raid. These weapons will go to the revolutionary army and will be given to their new masters. Get some rest Naruto. I can imagine you're exhausted from all that. Said Nagenda as Naruto nodded his head and retired to his quarters. But Leon and Akane caught the look on Naruto's face. Silveria was on a mission with mine and would not be back until tomorrow. Naruto sat on the bed as he looked at Incursio resting on the table in his room. He had to fight. He had to ensure that Bulet didn't die in vain. He had to make good on his promise to Bulet to continue pushing forward no matter what. Red King stayed silent and rested against the wall. Looking at the veins on his arm and then lifting up his shirt, he was sure that his body would still be alright. But he was afraid that if he risked another transformation like that, he'd be consumed. That form took a lot out of him and even slightly injured him. Hearing the door click and then open, he saw Kame and Leon in the doorway. Both stifled a gasp when they saw the veins running all over Naruto's body. Compassing themselves, the two sat down and embraced Naruto. Naruto-kun. We know you're hurting. Just let it out. Said Akame as Leon rubbed his back. And Naruto did just that. Tears ran down his cheeks as he brought both of them into the hug. Every bit that was bottled up inside came out at once. Naruto cried for a full five minutes as he let it all out. Leon and Akane were extremely glad to see that Naruto still had a soul left inside him. Killing someone for the first time can seriously cause you to change for the worst. But Naruto was still Naruto, and he was going to never change who he was. After he had finished crying, they broke from the hug, and Naruto dried his tears. I refuse to let Bulet's death go in vain. I will get stronger to ensure I keep everyone alive. To ensure a brighter future. Said Naruto as Leon placed a hand on his shoulder. We'd be glad to help you. We know you will do everything to save and preserve the peace. We're with you. Said Leon with a came agreeing with her. You're not alone. Never forget that. You have comrades, friends, we're all here for you. We'll always have your back. Said Akame. Thanks you too. I will fight knowing you're there with me. Said Naruto. 
You know. There is a tournament taking place soon. Wanna join? Ask Leon with a cane agreeing it to be a brilliant idea. I think it's a brilliant idea. A way to test my strength. Thanks. Said Naruto as both smiled to him as they gave him a kiss on each cheek. Can we sleep here with you? Asked a cane with Leon pouting. Sure. Said Naruto. He couldn't say no when the two of them made that face. Settling in with a cane on his left and Leon on his right, the two used his arms as pillows and fell asleep. Naruto smiled to them as he brought them closer and fell asleep. Tomorrow he'd be doing the tournament and see just how strong he had become. He knew within Curcio he could do a lot. But should he combine the two, he'd gain even more power than normal. But he needed to learn how to control it. And then there was the voice that spoke to him. Waking up the next morning to find both Akame and Leon slowly waking up, Naruto smiled to them as he gave each of them a kiss. Much to the amusement of their faces turning red. Naruto was truly thankful to them having his back. Getting out his room with Akame giving him a wink, they left to let Naruto get dressed. Nagenda had told the team before that she'd be going to the Revolutionary Army HQ to get some new members. Walking out his room he bumped into Silveria who had returned a few days early. Instantly wrapping her arms around his neck, she gave him a kiss. Naruto responded in kind by wrapping his arms around her waist and drawing her closer. Breaking from the kiss she smiled as she ran her fingers through his hair. But then she took notice of the veins that had spread to his chest now. Simply telling him that he should be careful, he responded by telling her he will. After having some breakfast and visiting Bulet's grave which was next to his parents' grave, he went on his way with Leon and Silveria to the tournament. Akane couldn't go as she was already on a wanted poster. So Silveria went in her stead. Looking around while waiting his turn in the arena, Naruto saw a lot of the fights. And he was utterly disgusted to be blunt. A lot of the fighters were just toying with their opponent instead of ending it then and there like he would. Looking up to the very top of the stairs that led to the top, Naruto spotted a woman with long cyan hair similar to that of Silveria, but the eye color was totally different to hers. While Silveria's was a fiery red, hers were an ocean blue. But one thing was for sure was that they certainly had the same body structure included also the chest area in the mix. But with the fight coming to an end. Naruto soon heard the voice over the speakers call out his name. In the one corner. Kurumi the butcher. In the other. Naruto the hunter. Shouted the announcer. Walking to the arena, Naruto adjusted his black jacket as he looked to his opponent, a rather large opponent who looked too beepy for his own good, walked over to the area he was meant to stand. Naruto simply scoffed at this and pulled out a book and chalked down some words. On the cover was written, Devil's Rituals. A.N. Don't bother looking it up. Just made up the name. I'll show you just how outclassed you are. I'll be taking that money all for myself. Said Kurumi as he looked down on Naruto. This guy is nothing. I can very easily take this guy down without Incursio or Red King. Thought Naruto as he go ready. The referee started the match, and Naruto blocked every attack from the overconfident amateur before him. Seeing an opening, he launched himself into the air and used the sun as a means to hide himself. Kurumi was blinded from the sun when he looked up to follow Naruto's movements. As Deeth leaned forward at the match. If it was one thing she learned from her father, it was to use your environment to your advantage. And this was what Naruto just did. Coming down to the ground, stretching his foot out, Naruto sped to the ground ready to end it all, but the black veins on his body pulsed an orange color once, and his eyes shifed to be black with a red iris. He didn't have time to stop the assault, and just went with it and slammed his foot on Kurumi's head, sending it into the ground and knocked him out cold, the force of the impact created a massive crater where Naruto was. At that moment, Naruto's eyes returned to normal as the crowds cheered for him. Looking around as they stood to their feet, Naruto thrusted his right hand into the air and made it into a fist as a smile graced his lips. Esdith soon shot to her feet as she began her walk. Naruto spotted this and soon got up his defenses. According to Leon who spoke to Nagenda before she left, the three beasts were her own bodyguard unit. And the three beasts were responsible for the death of Bulid. You handle yourself well. What's your name? She asked. It's common knowledge to give your own name first. Said Naruto as he looked at Esdith. Touché. Well, my name is Esdith. And I have taken a liking to you. She said as she placed her hands on his shoulders. Up in the stands, both Leon and Silveria seethed with rage. Who was this bitch to come in and place her hands on their Naruto-kun? Who? They absolutely hated the idea to the core. Well my name is Naruto. Replied Naruto holding out his hand for a shake, only to have Esdith slam a collar around his neck and then hook it up to a chain. Pulling on the chain, Naruto found himself being dragged and was taken to the palace. Sitting on the bed as he tried to pry the damn thing off his neck, he sighed in defeat and stopped what he was doing. Looking around the room, he found it to be a very nice room. But he preferred the one in Night Raid HQ. 
He then realized that should he tell Esdith of his connection to Night Raid, he'd be executed on the spot. He didn't want to die. Not when he set himself a goal of becoming emperor. Hearing the water stop, Naruto turned to find Esdith exiting the bathroom with nothing but a white shirt that was buttoned down to reveal her glorious chest. To be honest, Leon did walk around with a piece of clothing over her chest, and he and Silveria had slept in the same bed, but they were still going over the facts as to when to do it. But he had seen her chest once. Naruto knew where this was headed. Esdith was trying to seduce him into having sex with her. Which was slightly working due to Naruto's eyes fixated on her chest as the magnificent orbs jiggled about in the confines of the clothing. Watching Esdith take a seat on the bed with him, she crawled to him while Naruto found himself underneath her. Their faces only inches away as she gazed into his eyes. But as Esdith went in to secure a kiss, Naruto turned his head having her kiss his cheek. Why don't you want to kiss me? Do I not look pretty enough for you? She asked as she placed her hands on her chest. That's not it. It's just that I want to come to peace with it and then get into it. Replied Naruto as Esdith made an ah noise and got off him. Why do you fight against Night Raid? Asked Naruto looking over to her. They are cowards that took away everything. When I was a little girl, Night Raid attacked my village and killed my father and mother right before my eyes. I made an oath to always kill the enemy regardless on who they were. That is why I hate Night Raid. Why I will kill all of those spineless cowards. Said Esdith as Naruto began to think. According to the knowledge he had acquired from an agenda and books in the HQ. Naruto found that the revolutionary army created Night Raid ten years ago. Looking back to Esdith, he tapped her on the shoulder, getting her attention. When did your village get attacked? Asked Naruto. When I was seven years old. Said Esdith looking as to why he had such a concentrated face on him. But she just deduced it down to him thinking on their future lives together. Esdith could picture it right now. Naruto is a stay-at-home father, them living in the country on a farm they bought and three children running about on the farm while she ensured they had a comfortable life. She'd come home and give her children some sweets and other good things, while she and Naruto would add more to their family. Talking over how her life in the military was going after having such passionate sex with one another. But for Naruto, he wasn't planning of having a cliché family with Esdith, even though the idea of having one with her would be kinda nice if they weren't enemies and things were a lot more better in the Empire. It was as clear as rain. Esdith lost her father and mother when she was only seven. Night Raid was only established ten years ago. Which only meant one thing. Esdith's memories of the past had been altered. It was the only logical thing he could come up with. But with the knowledge that Esdith's memories were changed to give her a burning hatred to kill Night Raid, how was he going to return her memories to normal? How was she going to change her view on the whole thing in general? Deciding to call it a night, he gave a yawn as Esdith smiled to this and pulled him to her as she lay down on the bed and fell all seep. Despite the glorious and slightly uncomfortable position, Naruto reluctantly closed his eyes but snapped them open when he heard a warm chuckle. This was really weird as he had been hearing voices lately. Why was he hearing these things now? Was this some sort of side effect from Red King and Incursio from doing that merge when he was on the boat? Young Prince. Came a voice in his mind. That was when Naruto began to see what looked to be the spirit of Lenka come out the wall in front of him. Naruto saw he was clad in royal clothes as he stood there with his hand on his hip. He had charcoal black hair and jealous green eyes. He even held himself with such authority. The clothing itself was air oil red suit with a black cape draped over his shoulders. Who are you? Whispered Naruto trying to not wake Esdith. I am Lenka. And I am your great-great-grandfather. You alone are the new holder of Red King, the god arc that housed the chaotic power of the demon king said Lenka as Naruto blinked a few times. Hum again? I didn't quite catch that. Did you say Demon King? Whispered Naruto cupping his ear to hear better. All will be explained when you awaken the ability you will call Dragon Pulse. Said Lenka as he vanished from sight. Sighing as to not getting information on what was going on. Naruto felt his eyes slowly drop. It had been a long day and he was feeling tired. Tomorrow he'd be doing everything to get Esdith to give him some time alone, as she ensured he never went anywhere while she was out of the room. Honestly, he wasn't a dog that would run away from its master. He was a human being. Finally getting to sleep he began to wonder who in his family did he get his royal blood from? Only time will tell. So this part ends here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, so quickly like this video for second part of this series. And comment down below your thoughts about this series. And now it's time for me to go, bye.